So uh, today we talk about how to make sure that my types are not lying to me, because I think it's where you, we love TypeScript and uh, sometimes a bit too much. So let's see if it's always our friend. Uh, so welcome. For those that don't know me, uh, I'm Fabien. You can follow me on Twitter. And I'm currently working at Zeta. Uh, we are doing also a database as a service because databases are hard, as Prisma just <laughs> demonstrated just before. Uh, before talking a bit uh, about uh, types in TypeScript, let's let's do a little break and let's talk about my second hobby, uh, sport climbing. On in sport climbing, it's actually interesting. You just climb a mountain on the middle of nowhere. You need to anchor yourself to this kind of weird thing. So basically, you have two bolts, a chain, and a ring. And uh, you usually assume that it's very strong. You have a chain, you anchor, up, you are good to go. Up. And you can cross multiple things. You can cross just simple bolt, and you kind of need to do your own stuff to make sure that it's redundant. So if one bolt just give up, you don't die. Very important. Sometimes you have a bit of just metal, and you basically always compose around. But why I'm talking about this? Because for me, it's kind of JavaScript plus TypeScript. You know, you have this chain, very solid, that you trust. You see, it will never fail. Europe will just cut before the chain. And after you have the bolt, and you know, it's a mountain. You don't know if it was maintained recently, uh, the rock quality. And usually, you like to check it just to make sure. And if, for example, you see something like this, you don't use it, just obviously. Um, let's try to have the same awareness when we are using a TypeScript library. And um, my goal today is that every time you are using something that you think it's type safe, to ask you the question, what is behind the types? Can I trust it? Should I trust it? And um, if the types are not, connect, are not correct, what is the impact? So do I use just is my entire production is done? Do I use the users? Do my use customer lose money or, or not? But just be aware. Uh, but let's stop talking about climbing. Let's play a game. It's time for live coding because otherwise it's not fun. <laughs> and now let's try to see if I can kill this thing. And you will let me, of course not. I'm not sure about the screen recording on multiple screen, just saying. Up, uh, come on. Let you see my screen, so I guess it's fine. So what are we building today? We are just, let's build a little application together, just for fun. Uh, so classic application, up, I will have basically a backend, up, this backend will have a database, on this, up, so I will have a database in my backend, database, and this is actually for me uh, totally a black box, up, so it's gray out, and the only thing I have from this backend, uh, it's actually an open API spec, I could use uh, GraphQL, whatever, but I, I should open it. On what we are trying to build, it's the front end part. That it's not a black box because it's my application. Oh. On here, I'm trying to build the front end. This is the plan. Uh, what are we building? We are building a little climbing application to stay on the theme. On um, right now, I just have one database set up with some just connection. So I have some routes, uh, routes just have a sector, I have a list of climbers, and I have some assets. And the, the idea is just a quick application where I can list the route and say, oh, I send this thing, uh, I can add my friend, and we can uh, have a leaderboard, whatever. It's, you know, just uh, an excuse. <laughs> um, so let's start VS Code. Um, so first of all, up here, I have a little application. Is it big enough for everybody? Yes. Perfect. So I have a little application. So far, I just have one open API spec. Up, this is this big thing. I have one server already running. Uh, I don't read YAML. I'm a TypeScript developer, so let's skip this. 
uh, I'm here, Hop, let's open this. And the first thing I want to do is to create some types definition from this open API. I'm lazy. Uh, so yarn up open API cogen init. Let me this a little tool. I have a file. I have this. It's on the server and it's called open API dot yaml. I will call it API because I'm not creative and I want a rare query component and I will put this in API. I run this, and now I can run yarn gen, that's an alias. And just like this, as a front-end TypeScript developer, I already feel more confident because I don't need to read YAML anymore. I have type definition. Oof. So this is, is quite cool. It's, yeah. Building my confidence. Uh, let's implement this application. So I need a sector first. Up. So here I'm here. Up. Let's remove this thing. So far, it's everything it's any just to make this compiling. Up, so const say data sectors, we say use uh, as TypeScript to list um, sectors. Up, perfect, this takes nothing. And just like this, I have my tabs. This, this is quite cool. What I need to do, because uh, I will request the root from one sector, so I cannot need to inject the first sector on the second one. So easy, I'm in React, use effect. Up, uh, that will react uh, at sectors. On here, if sectors is defined, I just set sector with sector, the first one. What the? <laughs> Interesting. I was not expecting this. <laughs> Dot name. Up. So here, normally I should have a sector. Nope. No, I need the roots. Perfect. Const data root. Up. Use list root. Perfect. Yeah, I just auto complete everything. This is the beauty of TypeScript. You know, we are building our confidence. Up, I want the sector, it's there. And uh, I will not get trapped this time. And I will just want to disable the query when I don't have uh, anything. Just to avoid a useless uh, sector. Okay, cool. I have some red. It says this. That makes sense. Up, so I'm here after. So if I don't have any roots, that basically means that. I'm loading it. Up, up, div, loading. Okay. And normally everything is green. I can yarn dev. Up. The server is running. I'm clicking here. And as magic, I have an application. And here, you know, feel confident. You send this on production, open the champagne thing. But if, uh, if I go here, up. Uh, on everything is green. If I scroll down, if I can, up here yeah, I can see. What is this? I don't have the number of balls. Damn! But how? Just my my TypeScript is compiling. I'm good. Yeah, but my backend it's not a good one. It just manually types open API spec, infer this, and uh, yeah, somebody did a mistake. This happens. Sadly, but on here, I just uh, uh, okay. I did my QA job quite nicely. I catch it quite easily. I can check the request and see, oh, okay, it's undefined. I uh, can even just see on the database uh, because I'm a sneaky. I can see the, the roots up on here. Ah, dear. Here, somewhere here. Oh, this is null. <laughs> Smart. Uh, what, what do I want to do uh, about this? I want to be able to just uh, make sure that. The open API, it's the source of truth. And if something is wrong, I want to catch it as soon as possible. Because here it's one component that's using it, but you know, you just fetch something, put it in a, in a, in a way, pass it to the next, uh, the next, and at some point it blow up. And after, you have this in production, you have a bug, and you spend one week just following the track, and say, ah, our third party didn't, s <laughs> okay, I get you. So let's fix this. How can we do this? So let's kill the server. 
Um, and we can actually use style guards. This is actually what. Uh, does everybody know Zod? You don't? Perfect. It's fine. Uh, the idea behind Zod is to define some schema. Oh, so here, uh, this is just a unit test. We make this running yarn test. And the idea it's I have something any. So const uh, foo any that equal uh, foo count to up on bar uh, string. Up. And this so far it's any. What I want is when I consume this from the wild, I want to be able to type it. So what can I do? I can define a schema. Up with Zod, and this is an object. And my object have two properties that foo that Zod.number, Zod.number, and I have bar, and this is a string. Basically, live like script, but at the runtime. And now that I have a schema, I can actually do up const uh, valid uh, thing equal schema dot parse, and here I pass foo. And this has magic, this noise type. And this is still passing up, and I can say uh, valid. Uh, well. um, if this, for example, now it's a string, and I save, you will see my test will, will fail. And normally, I should have a very specific error that just say, oh, foo, I expect a number, and I receive a string. And this is very powerful because at runtime, I have two things. So I validate a red type that what I expect is really what I expect, and I also have type safety. I transform this ugly any to something types that I can use in my application. Of course, I'm a developer, so I'm lazy. So here I have the schema, and I have everything. I could do this by n, but we don't have time to do this. So let's cheat a bit. Yarn ts to zod, and here I take. Uh, SRC API API schema, and I want to create basically the same like here, schema. And here I will call zod.yes, and I press enter. A bit of magic. Here I'm validating the types. And here, as magic, here I have the schema. And this is a one to one mapping with what I have. Uh, and if I'm smart enough, I can inject this part of my just tool generation. Yeah, just uh, shortly. So what can I do with this? Easy. Keep it dirty. It's a live coding. We don't have time to make nice code. So I have root, if root. I need to import Zod. It's already import. And it's an array of my root schema. Parse my roots. And I'm doing this. I run my server again, yarn dev. And if I'm going back here, bam, I have a very explicit error <laughs> that says that it should be a number and it's undefined. And now I have two ways to fix this. I can report this to my backend, do something about it, or at least I know. After it's up to you. And, uh, and yeah, just so. And of course, here it's quite obvious. And, uh, but in real life, everything can happen. Just a breaking chance that was not communicated to, to your team. Everything blew up. You have a third API. Uh, I, I add this with a GraphQL API. And just, oh, GraphQL, nice. I generate my types. Oh, Python backend. <laughs> Nothing was just <laughs> compliant to the types. So really, just. And I use this technique with uh, GraphQL API, the type generating from the GraphQL API. So GraphQL, type script, generate the schema, and use the schema to do this. And, and you are really confident that just, if something blew up, it's not your fault. You can just say, huh, I was expecting a, a number. Yeah, you didn't do your job. So I can report easily a new issue, and you can just going forward. And uh, I think I totally forgot to start the chronometer, so I don't know if I'm on time. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, that's it.